Welcome back. This is uh, Lab 6.1, question number two. In this one, we're using a weighted average calculation, and uh, we're given the same information as we had in the previous question, so uh, it's all the same dates of sales and purchases. Once again, you can use the schedule if you'd like. Uh, if not, we are going to calculate the, uh, the tables using uh, just the calculation capability of lyrics. So, cost of goods available for sale would uh, still be the beginning inventory plus the uh, purchases and the units available for sale would still be the same 100 plus the 200 purchase pur purchase plus the second purchase and then if we take the 600 and subtract the two sales that gives us all of the units that we need now the table then asks us to fill in the table by calculating the dollar value of cost of goods sold and ending inventory as well as the gross profit earned by Southgate Inc. So here we have two sales and uh, we have uh, a couple of calculations we're going to need to do in order to, to make that work. So uh, that may actually be a good idea to do the calculations down here. So we have June 4th. We have a sale for $200. The cost per unit is going to be the total dollars for all of the inventory available at that time divided by the total units for all the inventory available at that time. So at June the 4th, we had 300 units at uh, 22 plus another 200 units at 21. And so that's the dollar value. Of course, we need to uh, put some brackets around that because the uh, division will take preference precedence over the the addition if we don't do that. So the bedmaster rule says we should put some brackets in. So uh, that's 300 times 22 plus 200 times 21. That's the total amount of inventory that we have available at that time. And then we need, that's the dollar side. So we need dollars per unit. So we need to divide that by the number of units. There were 300 units plus 200. And we can just pick up the, the uh, units from the calculation above. And so it's $21.60 each. So a little math tells us that 200 times 2160 that's the amount of uh, cost of goods sold for that uh, for that sale then we had another sale on October the 15th and this was a little trickier because uh, we sold 200 units out of the 500 available but the other 300 units that remain will use the $21.60 as their average cost so rather than using the numbers in the table above we have to use 2160 in order to value the last the, that 300 units, and uh, whoops, uh, I think I'm doing the calculation in the wrong place here. Plus, we have uh, another 100 units that we purchased at 19, and we need brackets, and then go back to the end and put a couple more brackets. And here we have 300 and plus 100. So that $21 actually should be in this calculation or in this uh, cell here. So what we've done is we've taken 300 of uh, inventory which was left from the beginning inventory plus the January 29th purchase because we had 500 units and we sold 200 in June. So that leaves us with 300 and we use the weighted average cost of uh, uh, those uh, inventory items uh, to value the 300 that were left over. Plus, we added another 100 on September the 9th. So we also had that inventory when we made the sale on October the 15th. So uh, 100 times 19 plus 300 times 2160, that's the dollar side. And the uh, number of units is the 300 we had left over after the first sale plus the 100 we bought in September. Okay, so now the number of units that were sold there is 200 units because that's what it tells us, not 2100, 200. So if we take that number, drag it over there, and then go to the end or the beginning and uh, take 200 times that amount. So 200 times the average cost of $20.95. That means our cost of goods sold is just simply the sum of those two numbers. So 43.20 plus 41.90. Our ending inventory, our ending inventory will be at uh, $20.95. And so that's 200 times 20.95 20 
because that's what we calculated as the weighted average uh, cost per unit uh, at the October 15th sale. So the remaining inventory would have been at that same price. So our gross profit here would be 400 units times $25 each minus the cost of goods sold of 85.10. And that's the entry there. Now, once again, we're going to make the, uh, the same two entries where we have uh, uh, the first entry is the purchase on September the 9th. And of course, that's not going to be any different because that's how much cash we paid for it. And it tells us right up in the first, first bit of information there that we should assume, assume that all purchases and sales are for cash. So here we bought some merchandise inventory. And that's transaction A. So we use that as the letter. Then on the 10th of, on the 15th of the 10th month, 15th of October, we sold, uh, we sold 200 units for a value of 25. And so that means we got cash and we have sales for that. And that's uh, transaction B. Drag that same date down to the next part. And this is the cost of goods sold. And that's this number that we calculated down here. So we can just grab that and drag it up here. And drag that there to the credit. And the credit will be merchandise inventory. Also transaction B. So um, that should be everything. Let's see what lyrics thought. Derek agrees with us. We're done.